Uh, welcome to our talk about the rocket science of deploying Cloud Foundry in a multi-cloud environment. Uh, my name is Fabio Berchtold. I've been working for the past three years for uh, Swisscom's application cloud project. Uh, naturally, this means I've been working with Cloud Foundry, Concourse, and Bosch, and various other Bosch uh, releases. I'm also part of the Cloud Foundry Ambassador Program, and I'm a passionate Golang developer who has contributed to various um, Cloud Foundry projects. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Emmo, and I've been working for now more than one year in Swisscom for the Application Cloud Project. Um, started in the infrastructure team, was mainly involved setting up the whole multi-cloud environment um, based on OpenStack, and um, joined the team at the beginning of this year, and now doing all the stuff which Fabio does. Okay, um, let's start with our talk. Uh, before we start, there is a brief outline about uh, the topics we'll show you. We'll introduce the uh, Swisscom application cloud as a product to you. We'll uh, discuss why we've chosen a uh, multi-cloud environment how the uh, multi-cloud architecture actually looks like at Swisscom. We'll also give you a short uh, introduction to the Bosch uh, multi-CPI feature, which actually enables all of this. Then we'll give you an in-depth look about the Bosch deployments that power the Swisscom and, uh, application cloud. You also get a brief detour to our continuous deployment setup with Concourse. And last but not least, we'll show you one of the cool features this enables to be able to migrate easily uh, between different infrastructure providers. So let's start the journey. Uh, the Swisscom Application Cloud, what is it? The uh, Swisscom Application Cloud is uh, Swisscom's custom platform as a service offering managed by Swisscom that we offer uh, to anyone who uh, wants to use it. We have the public offering available on developerswisscom.com. You can go there, you can create an account, uh, you can register, put in your credit card details, and you can start pushing apps to this platform as a service, which of course has Cloud Foundry at its core. We also offer a great variety of services in our marketplace. They uh, mostly consist of the usual suspects, which I'm going to show you now. Let's have it rain some services. We have uh, MongoDB, RabbitMQ, uh, MySQL based on MariaDB. We have Elasticsearch. Of course, Redis is also there. We have an S3 compatible object storage named Dynamic Storage. And last but not least, since we are a telecommunications provider and company, we also have a service called Smart Messaging, which really is just a fancy name for SMS or short message. Um, our main business actually, though, is the uh, Swisscom Enterprise Application Cloud, which is a managed platform as a service that we offer to our enterprise customers. The Swisscom Enterprise Application Cloud is the same as the public offering, but it's uh, installed, deployed, and managed by us within our own data centers for our customers. This uh, platform as a service in our data centers then is uh, network-wise interconnected to the internal network of our, our customers' companies. Uh, this uh, network interconnectivity is actually one of Swisscom's specialities. The enterprise application cloud offering also has the same services in the marketplace, and all the data and everything resides within our own data centers. Uh, hence, one of our main selling points is that all your data stays within Switzerland. Uh, when one of these uh, famous three-letter agencies comes calling, you know you're safe with us. Now I'll hand it over. So, yeah. Um, some of you may ask why we set up a multi-cloud. So, first of all, our customer wants to have reliability, failure tolerance, and also high availability. And, of course, the customers expect a cloud to be always up and running. And probably they're also limit limited to external or internal regulation, which 
which they have for their own projects they want to push onto the application cloud. So it was quite clear that we need multiple data centers to fulfill these requirements. Secondly, it's also a story about our own internal lessons learned because the maintenance work on the infrastructure below should be without downtime for any deployment or workload running on top of it. So with having different customers and having them agreed and coordinated to a single maintenance window, that's nearly impossible. So this would probably lead to the situation that your infrastructure is less maintained, which would in turn bring more, more bugs or missing features. And yeah, you can't fix them because it would affect multiple customers at the same time. <laughs> On the other hand, we also want to be somehow flexible for the future, so it's a kind of a baseline for a hybrid cloud setup. So next, um, to provide our customer the best possible experience, we came to the conclusion that we need multiple data centers. So we engineered a Swisscom application cloud around three different data centers as its backbone. As you can see from this picture, we set up our infrastructure, in this case OpenStack and VMware, on these three different data centers. Each of these data centers represents an availability zone from Bosch's point of view. You see there the Bosch, the Bosch directory is placed in one availability zone and it um, orchestrates the different EAS in the different availability zones. It has each of these availability zones configured in its CPI configuration, and they are mapped to names like Zone 1, Zone 2, and so on. When deploying Cloud Foundry, all we need to do is to specify what we will, would like to have. Let's say we want to have three instances, one in each availability zone, and then Bosch will automatically spread those, these across those uh, data centers. The really cool thing about this setup is that all these availability zones are directly connected network-wise, means any VM in any availability zone can talk to another VM in any different availability zone, site independently. And this allows us to, let's say, a, a really true multi-cloud, which means one cloud, foundry oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> one cloud foundry installation stretched over those three different data centers. The blue box where you see there is the F5. It serves as an application firewall, but more importantly, as a load balancer, our entry point for any traffic going to the Go, uh, Go routers of Cloud Foundry. Each site has its own local entry point for any traffic for, any traffic for each site, and it uh, routes east-west bound traffic. On top of this, um, we have what we call the global load balancer, and it serves as our single, single entry point for, outside, for incoming traffic from outside. It distributes globally all incoming requests to each site. Uh, the special thing about this setup is that in most so-called multi-cloud environments, there is a separate Cloud Foundry installation per data center or per availability zone or whatever. But the big disadvantage there is that there has to be, to be some, somehow a logic in place which manages the distribution of, for example, pushing an app. Usually this is done by some kind of API replicators or local answers, but for us this was not really a practicable solution, so we try to, uh, to improve that and engineer this great setup which enables us to do something like this, like stretch one cloud foundry over different availability zones, which translates in our case to different data centers. So, yeah, the, that means, in fact, that we manage to realize one single push for our customers, and they don't have to care about what's happening behind the scenes. And thanks to Bosch and its concept of a CPI, which abstracts away the interaction Bosch has to do with any particular infrastructure provider, any deployment is completely infrastructure agnostic and can also be deployed on a hybrid cloud platform. We can mix and match various infrastructure provider as needed. And Swisscom is in the unique position to be actually able to pull this off thanks to being an ISP itself, because we own and control our data center and all the network pipes by ourselves. Therefore, it was possible to, 
to guarantee also a minimal latency in this case. So in the worst case, we have uh, between these physical locations, in, in the worst case, we have a latency of about two milliseconds, which should be still fast enough for any component running on top of it. And through, through features such as isolation segments, we can even give our customers the choice on which data center or infrastructure they want their app to be pushed and running on. So, yeah. And uh, also a, a big advantage of this is that uh, this allows us to have this thread maintenance window because we can take down a whole data center and Cloud Foundry will still happily keep on running. It provides us the high availability and failure tolerance we need. So now, um, a short topic, the Bosch multi-CPI feature. I don't want to go too deep into this topic, but I think it's, it's really an enabler for this story. So all this magic which Bosch allows us to do comes from the core concept of a cloud provider interface. Um, in the past, it's not a long time ago, the Bosch director wasn't able to handle multiple CPI configurations at the same time. It was only able to talk to one configured infrastructure provider. When we started our journey in the middle of the last year, we quickly realized that we want to be able to talk to different infrastructure provider from the same Bosch director from the same, at the same time. And Bosch fortunately had already the concept of these native built-in availability zones. We thought, why shouldn't we apply this concept to the infrastructure too? And yeah, that's what we did. Um, the Bosch multi-CPI feature was developed by Swisscom in collaboration with Pivotal last year to allow a Bosch director to handle multiple CPI configuration at the same time. It not only allows us to configure multiple availability zones um, for one infrastructure provider, it allows us even to have uh, multiple, multiple infrastructure, infrastructure provider and then deploy software across it. And the cool thing is it enables us also to provide a hybrid cloud environment. And from the end user's point of view, it's all completely abstracted. He, they don't have to care about it. Okay. Um, so let's uh, have a closer look at the inner workings of the Swisscom application cloud. Um, it always starts out with the initial Bosch director when we set up a new uh, customer's environment. Um, as mentioned before, we have three different availability zones. Now, the reason for choosing three zones was because um, this plays uh, particularly well together with uh, various leader election algorithms like the raft consensus algorithm and so on, that, for example, we have in our standalone uh, console cluster deployment. We also have ETCD clusters. Um, we have distributed uh, Mongo DB enterprise clusters, Redis, and so on. So it seemed to be the reasonable choice to make to uh, choose three different availability zones which map to three different data centers. Um, the first thing we usually deploy is uh, what we call the uh, core infrastructure. Here we have a DNS deployment based on Unbound. This uh, DNS deployment uh, serves as the whole DNS backend for all the other components that will follow. This uh, goes together with the uh, console cluster that we deploy. Here we actually have uh, three uh, console nodes per availability zone, which translates into a nine node console cluster. Now you might think this is a bit of overkill and actually poses some performance problems and trouble for us, but we're really only using the uh, console cluster for its service discovery features based around DNS resolution, and we're not really using any of its uh, key value store based stuff, so we are, we're fine with having a nine node cluster. In fact, it actually improves the uh, high availability and especially failure tolerance for us because having a nine node cluster means we can take down a whole zone for one of these maintenance windows and even one additional node can fail on any of the availability zones and the cluster still remains or still keeps, maintains quorum and stays healthy. So this was an important choice for us to make. We also have a Docker registry per availability zone, which is used by Kubernetes and Concourse and other Docker-based services we have. 
we deploy one concourse worker per availability zone. And the reason for uh, only deploying workers uh, will be explained in the next slide. We also have a Galera cluster and we have Stark and Wayne's shield. The uh, Galera cluster serves as the SQL backend for all our RDBMS needs we have, like for example, Club Foundry needs. And uh, Shield is there for obvious reasons. It serves as the uh, safety net we need to be able to sleep well at night and it provides us with backups. Uh, the next components are the uh, business integration components. Here we have the end user facing web portal. We have the uh, CF extension API filter whose uh, responsibility is to intercept and extend any API traffic going to the cloud controller. Uh, with this, we can implement our own custom API features. And uh, we also have the uh, billing component who you can guess what it does by its name. It handles all our billing needs. Um, we have to earn some money after all. Uh, next is the centerpiece, Cloud Foundry. I'm sure you've heard of it before. Uh, here we deploy multiple isolation segments. Now the reason for this is rather special because we use or rather abuse these isolation segments to be able to provide to our customer to have the different versions of go router and cell deployments in these isolation segments. In the past we've had um, issues where even the uh, tiniest change in go router behavior or changes in the root file system were actually able to break our customers' apps. And through having uh, different isolation segments with different versions of these components, we are able to empower our users to uh, first test these new versions with their apps to see if uh, the behavior is still as expected and if everything works as expected. Uh, we also have a big Kubernetes cluster deployment, which we use for our container-based services. Any small to medium-sized Redis instances or MongoDB instances, for example, that you can consume from our marketplace, they're powered by this Kubernetes cluster and running inside a Docker container. Um, last but not least, we have what we call the um, Bosch-based services. Here we deploy our own in-house developed service broker, the uh, open service broker that's available also on GitHub. We also deploy any additional Bosch directors here whose uh, responsibility is to orchestrate these uh, bigger services. We have uh, Galera clusters in here, MongoDB Enterprise, Redis Enterprise, uh, RapidMQ is also in there. Uh, these uh, bigger services, they're basically meant for those times uh, when you need to bring out the big guns and you need a cluster of big-sized standalone VMs rather than have the uh, small service instances running in containers. Now, as I've mentioned before, we only deploy one concourse worker per uh, availability zone. And here's the reason why. We have a uh, special central management plane from where we control those workers in this uh, central management plane, we deploy a central concourse ATC and actually also the concourse database and some additional workers. And all the workers on all the other environments are configured to talk back to that central ATC. Uh, the workers have been specifically tagged for the ATC to identify uh, which environment they belong to or which customer they belong to and all our continuous delivery and continuous deployment pipelines, they're located in the central ATC. Uh, when we want to do an update, all we need to do is we just need to trigger these pipelines there, uh, and the, it goes to the worker and everything is done there. Now these workers, uh, most of what they do is they talk to the local Bosch director there to issue deployment commands, but uh, they also do various other things like pushing images to the Docker registry, or setting up some files or some infrastructure configuration and so on. But it's really mostly uh, commands issued to the Bosch director. And this Bosch director then deploys or updates the local components there, like the core infrastructure, Cloud Foundry, uh, the Kubernetes cluster, the, uh, all the Bosch-based services, and the uh, business integration components. Now, um, as a 
in the beginning when I showed you the outline, I mentioned that one of the cool features that uh, this three availability zone, three data center so, uh, setup enables us to do is we can easily add, mix and match uh, new CPI configurations with different infrastructure providers live while everything, everything still keeps on running on top of it. Um, for example, we can uh, we, here in this example, we have uh, three availability zones based uh, on OpenStack in the three different data centers. And what we can do is we can just take out zone three, for example, either for a maintenance window or to really get rid of it completely. And in this case here, I have it replaced with a new zone four, which is based on VMware. And uh, the Bosch director will take care of uh, all the stuff on top of it, uh, thanks to its magic, uh, the Cloud Foundry deployment, for example. It will just keep on running, and all the apps on top of it, they will just keep on running. The, uh, our, um, the end users or our customers, they will not actually even realize oh, what has just happened on the infrastructure mm -hmm. side. And this is one of the things that we actually aimed for, to be able to do these maintenance windows uh, when we wanted and not when our customer was saying it's right to do it. Uh, we can continue this little game even further. And for example, now we can take out zone two and have it replaced by a new zone running on Amazon AWS. Or uh, to go completely crazy, we can also now replace zone one and have it running on Microsoft Azure. Now, of course, uh, when you start using these external infrastructure providers like uh, Amazon, Google, or Microsoft Azure, um, you, start to, uh, you have to start thinking again about possible problems this introduces, especially um, regarding uh, network connectivity and network latency. Of course, uh, the, the, the multi-cloud setup we have wouldn't work if you were choosing, let's say, AWS regions or in Europe, Asia, and the US. I mean, network latency stretched across all over the globe, this would be a killer. But uh, if you're like us and you have your own data centers and they're somewhat uh, closely located physically and you have good connectivity between them, then I say um, it's absolutely worth it to, to uh, do this setup and to go for it. I mean, it's perfect. And uh, this was all made possible thanks to our ambitious goal of having a true multi-cloud setup for our Cloud Foundry deployments. Yeah, and now it looks like the application cloud rocket has reached its destination. Um, the eagle has landed and multi-cloud is born. So with this, uh, we conclude our presentation and we thank you all for your attention and uh, we're now open for questions. Yes? Um, yeah, if you only have a single instance of an app, then of course it might happen that it's running on a cell which is in this one availability zone we take down. And then um, it might be that you realize that there is a downtime, but actually, um, I mean, when you issue the uh, redeployment command for Cloud Foundry from the Bosch director, the drain scripts of Cloud Foundry will run of these particular cells that the Bosch director is uh, intended to remove from this old zone, and the drain should be responsible to relocate the app first to uh, a cell which is on another zone to uh, keep it running. So, I mean, in theory, if, even if you have only one instance of an app, you should not realize that there's any downtime. And if you have two or three instances, then of course you really shouldn't notice because it's Cloud Foundry's job to, uh, to try and spread these app instances over the different cells on the different availability zones. I mean, the cells or Diego is uh, availability zone aware and it tries to keep it spread. Sorry? You need to do some work for... Uh, 
no, no, it's Cloud Foundry should handle this all for you. You shouldn't really be, a, there shouldn't be no need to actually do something yourself as an operator or as an app developer. You really just push your app and we can take down this zone and your app uh, should keep running because the drain scripts of the cell, they will first, before the cell goes completely away, they will relocate it on another cell in another zone. Yeah, but while this is happening, the old one is still running. So the, the drain scripts in Cloud Foundry, they will not take away the app before it has been relocated. I mean, of course, unless there is a really long timeout and it takes really long time to get your app up and running again. Or it might also be the case if your app has, um, let's say, a bad health check, which reports back immediately, oh, I'm healthy again, but let's say your app is a big Java application and it takes ages to start up the, um, the, the application server inside there, then of course it could happen, but that's why you deploy more than one instance of an app, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So have you done any testing on like what the the network latency between the different data centers, as you said, that you own all of yours and they're closer, but to the idea of trying to stretch that across data centers that could be further away, do you, do you well, have any estimates on what that latency no, would No, we like? didn't do any testing on how much uh, was possible. Um, we just, uh, we have our data centers here in Switzerland and of course Switzerland is rather small, so um, I mean, we just tested um, between our data centers currently the maximum latency we have is two milliseconds and for us this was enough. So far we have not tried to spread it, um, let's say, across Switz uh, or across Europe. We haven't tried this yet, so I can't really tell you what uh, the, the, the limit would be for it to still work, unfortunately. Hi, how do you handle data consistency between the three data centers? Um, the, um, uh, what do you mean exactly? Because um, the Bosch director has these three data centers configured as availability zones and there is really no need to handle everything. I mean, you, we just deploy one single Cloud Foundry deployment and the Bosch director stretches it across these three availability zones. So it's still, it is one deployment. And for example, also when we deploy console or ETCD, it is one cluster deployment stretched across these three availability zones, which are on the three data centers. The, the, uh, the, it's the responsibility of the software itself to keep itself uh, healthy and in consistency. We, we, don't, really, we don't really do any um, let's say we're not stretching the infrastructure itself, just the deployments on top of it across these three availability zones. And the Bosch director has this concept of availability zones and will um, look after uh, the deployment. So when you say you deploy a three node ETCD cluster, it will deploy one node in zone one, zone two and zone three. And it's uh, the responsibility of the software to, um, to keep consistent. And the, the, the three zones, network-wise, they're completely interconnected, and the traffic east-westbound, it's uh, for, it for the components running in these data centers, it looks like a flat network. Um, just to elaborate on this a little bit, uh, have you done anything specific to, to, um, to try to address the case in which you completely lose east-west connectivity, basically? Um, because it's a single <laughs> deployment, right? So if you lose that connectivity, then... Yeah, of course, if we lose completely the connectivity from every zone to every zone, then, of course, this would stop working. I mean, it would be like everything goes down. But we can safely lose uh, one of these three zones. Um, we, let's say, unintended... It was unintended that we tested it once, but it happened, and... Funny enough, uh, none of our customers noticed, so it still kept on running while just having two zones uh, interconnected with each other. So the, your, uh, the global load balancer is able to detach the missing zone? 
Um, yes, yes, of course, uh, the, the load balancers, the local ones and the global ones, they have health checks to really see, uh, is, is, are these components all still up and running? Can I send traffic there and so on? Um, and if, if uh, one zone goes down unintended or actually because we do have a maintenance window, then the traffic will only go to the remaining zones. And as long as we still have two zones running and connected, they will basically uh, maintain uh, quorum and uh, the, the deployments on top should stay safe and keep running. Thanks. Um, so you talked about migrating things from OpenStack to vSphere, for example, which is easy enough if the stuff you migrate doesn't have any persistent data. Uh, how did you migrate things that do have persistent data? Like, do yeah, you... the, that's actually funny. We, um, we, um, use um, or we trust the software itself to do that when we have, uh, for example, Redis clusters and we take down this one zone on OpenStack and bring up a new zone on, on VMware. Um, it's, uh, our intention is that uh, the, the Redis cluster is responsible for uh, by itself to see, ah, I have a new member which has not synced yet and then the Redis cluster should sync uh, all the missing state to this one new node that came up so, so we leave it basically all to the software to keep in sync. Uh, two questions. Uh, this uh, uh, Bosch uh, multi multi CPI feature is already in the master branch. It's uh, already. Um, right? Yeah, since uh, I think the beginning of this year, it's in the master branch of Bosch, and um, you can use it. There is. Uh, Usually you have uh, the command for uh, cloud config and uh, runtime config. And beginning of this year, another command was added, the CPI config. And with this, you can load these uh, multiple CPI configurations into your Bosch director. And uh, some documentation uh, how to uh, provision a multi-cloud multi solution? Uh, I'm not sure if there is documentation on how to really uh, provision with multiple different uh, CPIs. But uh, there is some documentation on Bosch IO on how to use the multi-CPI features, but I think that the examples are only for having the same infrastructure provider with just different credentials or um, something like that. Mm -hmm. But it should be fairly straightforward because all you do is you configure these different CPIs the same as you would uh, before with the same properties for a single CPI. It's just multiple of them in one YAML file. Yeah, thank you. So you were saying that the end users, they don't really notice much of all of this. They don't have to care about it. But what if I want to care about it as an end user? What if I have a space where I want to have the apps deployed into a data center in Switzerland and then another space where I don't care about it? Um, they can go into AWS or anything. So is there any way of how I can influence that? Maybe yeah, this segments? is actually um, one of the things we are currently evaluating and probably will have as, on, uh, as a feature um, next. Uh, what we will do is we will deploy isolation segments and have them specifically mapped to one of these availability zones that are, for example, on AWS. And then at deploy time, as um, the app developer, when you push your app, you can choose to which isolation segment it goes. And you can choose, for example, an isolation segment on an availability zone, which is solely located on AWS, if you choose to do that. Um, since you have one Cloud Foundry installation, um, where do you place your singleton jobs? The, the singleton jobs? Yeah, and w on which availability zone do you um, place them? Which singleton job? Because I don't think we have a single instances of anything. We have everything, at least uh, three instances. I mean, uh, famously there was the uh, the Cloud controller clock global, uh, but that also recently has been made HA, and we deploy three instances of it now. And um, for uh, the Cloud Foundry deployment, we have everything at least in pairs of three and spread over all three zones. Ah, Shield. Yeah, Shield unfortunately currently is not yet HA, so we have it only in one zone. But uh, Shield is not, um, let's say, not a user facing component. 
It's just for our own infrastructure when we do backups and restores. Um, so it's not really a problem for us if we take down the one availability zone where we just have one shield instance. We then either, either we bring it back up again because it was just a regular maintenance window or we redeploy shield just to another zone and it will run again. Uh, the blob stores, they are not actually um, on these availability zones. We have an external S3 provider, uh, which we use, and all our blobs are distributed there. Um, the external provider, I think we are using uh, ECS for this, and we have it also spread across data centers. For us, it's an external service that we consume. We don't have to worry there about uh, keep it up and running. Sorry uh, for the st st that I still have a question. I was wondering if you have full network visibility from your on-premise um, installation to the public clouds, or do you have any limitations to that? Um, that is up to you to choose when you want to have the Swisscom Enterprise application cloud. It's up to you to say, yeah, it should be like fully available from the internet, or it's completely closed off into your company's internal network or you also want to be able to reach uh, our public offering because you have some apps running there or some microservices which you have actually on the public offering and then on the private offering. Um, it's up for the customer to decide. We could basically configure it as wanted or needed. Yeah, still one more question. <laughs> ah, one more. <laughs> Um, when you have one Cloud Foundry installation, you have some components that spawn multiple data centers, um, maybe console or etcd clusters. Um, did you experience any problems upgrading them? Because when you upgrade Cloud Foundry and you have to upgrade your etcd cluster or, or console? Um, let's say so yeah. far not. <laughs> Uh, you never know, but uh, I think the, um, the, the, the console and ETC deployments inside Cloud Foundry, they're um, quite okay with it currently. And I mean, there's an ongoing effort to actually remove console from, from Cloud Foundry. And um, our own console cluster, as mentioned before, is actually a nine node cluster. So there we really play it safe. Um, we've not had an issue so far where we took down a, an availability zone and lost data, or we had a cluster of console ETCD or so uh, that suddenly lost quorum. We were so far lucky enough that this hasn't happened. Of course, it always might happen. You never know if suddenly an additional node goes down that you didn't expect, but um, at the moment, it, it's working. <laughs> Uh, how is your deployment workflow like? Have you sliced down like different isolation segments or different components uh, for different AZs, or it's a single deployment? Uh, the Cloud Foundry deployment is um, the, the actually it are it is multiple deployments. The Cloud Foundry deployment itself, the core Cloud Foundry, it's just one deployment that is spread over three availability zones. Mm -hmm. But when we do this additional isolation segments, uh, we actually do them as different deployments. Of course, we could also have them in one Cloud Foundry deployment, but we felt because these additional isolation segments there, not all of our customers want or need them, so we have them uh, separated in separate deployments. But uh, the main platform, like the public offering or the, the basic enterprise application cloud offering, it's just one Cloud Foundry deployment. But then, uh, if you have the management plane as a single deployment, uh, how do you manage the compatibility between like I, s the, some of the older versions running the isolation segment and uh, a different version of the management plane? Um, well, that so far in, this, uh, in the isolation segment, the only thing that are in there are go routers and cells, and we've not yet run into the issue where the the API between management and these two components in the isolation segment uh, was breaking. I, I guess it could be a possible problem if these versions are too far apart. Yeah. But um, so far, we've only always had it in uh, steps of one. We always add one new 
uh, isolation segment for our for the customer to test the latest version, and we just one version back, and then we upgrade after a few weeks. Uh, so far, we've not had any breaking API changes between management and the isolation segments. Yeah, because it can be an issue between the cloud controller and the 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 CC bridge. Yeah, which for sure, it would be possible. Translates yeah. to the VBS. So. That would be possible. Yeah, but okay. um, we we try to avoid any changes. I mean, we have integration and testing environments, and okay. yeah. Thanks. Okay. No more questions. We're done. Yay.